an SSL thing we have, a simple suburban living. And uh, today, as you saw there, we've got the new 55 gallon drum all cleaned up and cut the top off and all ready to turn into a fish tank here. Um, this is going to be the second fish tank in the system, and this is going to be uh, where I'm going to start to have some tilapia. Um, I think I've decided on tilapia over perch, um, and uh, this is where I'm going to kind of get the, the, the new fingerlings. Uh, started in here and then as they grow larger uh, I'll use both tanks to separate larger ones from smaller ones and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so wanted to have the secondary tank here. I didn't want to obviously mix them in with the goldfish and until I can get the goldfish moved outside to their uh, permanent home in the goldfish pond uh, we'll have to keep them separated here. So uh, all I'm going to be doing with this barrel is just using some bulkhead adapters to connect the two tanks together here with a bulkhead adapter in between. Um, I'll show you kind of how I'm doing that, how the bulkhead adapters work and how they install and I'll also show you how to use the uh, solids lifting uh, pipe piping that we're using here, all pretty basic stuff. Uh, we'll kind of go through that process and uh, see how it turns out. Okay, so first thing I'm doing is just getting the other fish tank, my active fish tank, drained down um, a little less than halfway so I can um, get in there and get the hole drilled in the fish tank. Uh, while I'm waiting for that to drain, I'll get started on the new tank here that I'm building. And I'm using these bulkhead adapters that I've used in the rest of the system. I've had real good luck with them. Um, I really like these. And uh, these are a little more expensive than the Uniseals, as I've talked, to, talked about many times. But this is what these bulkhead adapters look like. They're a rigid PVC plastic. They come with a, a, a flexible kind of O-ring or seal in here. Uh, and then they've got a thread that the out, outside uh, pinch adapter threads onto. Um, these bulkheads, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, I got these on Amazon. I think these were these ones are about six bucks a piece, and so I'll put a link in the description there for these. But this is the ins this is the the side of the bulkhead that goes on the inside of the barrel, and it has a threaded fitting on it, so you can use a male threaded adapter and thread in whatever type of stuff you want on the inside of your fish tank or inside of your barrel. Um, I never, you know, glue any of the fittings on the inside of my fish tanks just because. I don't want to take them apart or adjust things or change things on the inside and it's underwater so I obviously don't care if it's if it's leaking a little bit that doesn't matter um, since it's inside the tank and underwater um, and then this is what you end up with on the outside so this threads on and you end up with a uh, inch and a half uh, slip fitting on the outside and you just glue in you know your pipe or fittings to to that uh, with regular PVC cement so I really do like these little bulkheads they've they've been really good uh, real handy so uh, I'll go ahead and show you how I'm getting the hole prepared here and I'm just using I'm using an inch and a half bulkhead adapter and I'm using a two and a half inch hole saw just a regular old hole saw and I'm just gonna kind of make some measurements and mark my hole here drill a nice clean hole through the PVC I'll clean that up and then we'll get the bulkhead uh, mounted in So once we've got our hole drilled, I'm just going to take some sandpaper and just kind of get any little burrs off. Make sure we got a nice smooth edge to get a good seal from that bulkhead in there. Okay, so just for good measure, I always throw a, a bead of uh, waterproof or underwater um, silicone on the uh, bulkhead adapter just to make sure we get a, a nice seal there. Once we get it hand tight, I just put a couple good turns on it with, the, with some channel locks here. Again, you got to be kind of careful. You don't want to over tighten because you can crack the PVC, but it needs to be tight enough to seal. Okay, here comes the stressful part. Um, I'm cutting into the fish tank that I have set up currently. Uh, I've got my hole marked off. I just set the other barrel up here and lined the two, the bulkhead adapter I already installed up with this one and drew a circle around it so I can get a nice um, centered hole connection between the two. And we're going to go ahead and get this cut through. And we're going to put the new bulkhead adapter in. Okay, so just to show you, this is the inside of the new tank here, just to show you how I do the solids solids lifting overflow, it's called. Um, so I've got my thread-in male adapter here, 
and again I'm working on with all inch and a half and I don't really crank or tighten down anything um, I'll hand tighten the fittings and I'll press all the PVC pipe together so I'm not gluing anything so I just have a short piece um, coming out here to a T and that is going all the way down to a coupler and the coupler on the bottom I just have pressed in a piece of wire lath and this was just a piece of wire lath I used in a, a shower remodel that we did to do the uh, floor pan and everything out of cement so you can use hardware cloth or screening or anything like that but this is just press fit in here the sharp edges of the wire kind of dig into the PVC and this is pretty pretty rigid so that keeps any fish from getting sucked up and that just goes on the bottom here nice and tight so it doesn't fall off and the way I have it set up is this just sits about a half to three quarters of an inch off the bottom of the barrel so as the fish swim around, they kind of stir up any of their, their waste and any uneaten fish food. It just all migrates towards the tube and then it slowly lifts up and then exits out through the, uh, the overflow here. Now the standpipe on the top, obviously to make sure the fish don't uh, go in there. You don't want to just have a 90 going right out because you could end up siphoning water out of your tank if there was a leak somewhere. You could actually siphon the tank all the way down to nothing. So you keep the T here so that you always have air um, at the top so that you never create a siphon sucking the air out. This also works as an overflow in case the tank overfills. If something gets clogged up at the bottom of your wire there, a dead fish, or you know, gets dirty over time, you don't clean it or something, it gets, gets clogged up, then the water will fill up and it'll overflow into the top part here so you don't have water all over your floor or outside, whatever. So that's how I do the, the solids lifting overflow. Um, the nice thing about this too, is without any of these being uh, glued together if I have uh, fingerlings in here some real small baby fish or something I can replace this with a smaller screen and then as the fish get older I can put a bigger screen on here so these are real nice to, to have well time to connect the two tanks together here Okay, just kind of give you an aerial view of the, the system really quick so you can kind of see from a, a more macro standpoint here what I added and how everything's kind of working. So we've got the, the two fish tanks, the old one in the back there and the dirty looking one and then the new one here that we just added. Um, these two are sitting on a very heavy duty, um, sorry about the focus, 2x4 and 4x4 stand that I built and they're also sitting up on some 4x4s just to get a little extra height out of them. Um, so they're connected by the bulkhead adapters that we just added in here. So it's just a straight connection between the two. And inside we've got the solids lifting overflow. And again, so the water will kind of lift all the solids out and feed it right through here into this other tank. And I've got the, uh, there we go, um, pipe coming in right here. And then I just have a 90 shooting down. So any of the solids from that tank will kind of settle to the bottom of this tank and then they'll come up the solids lifting overflow at the bottom of this tank which is right here and then that comes out to the uh, swirl filter going in here and as you can see that swirl filter is working very well and needs to be cleaned out I haven't been able to keep up with it I, I used it I used the waste there as fertilizer in the summertime on the gardens and everything outside you know almost every other day um, winter times come now and I've used it on some of our house plants and our indoor, we have an indoor orange tree and stuff like that, but uh, um, there's too much, so I'll have to dump some of that out to waste here and get this all cleaned up. But swirl filter's been working good, water comes in here, swirls around, and then the clean water goes out to the grow beds. So, and I'll give you a quick look at the growth, I know I did an update last week, but basically all new products or new crops in here. Um, this is the spinach doing real well still a little bit of uh, yellowing on the leaves but um, my pH is still coming down the system it was at 8.2 uh, before I changed all the rock and we're down to about 7.6 now and so it every week or two it drops a point so and I'm still trying to sprout some uh, some of those more of those bush beans in here I think I 
seeds are too old or something. I'm having trouble getting them to sprout there. Peppers are doing real well. And it looks like I had a... This happens to me all the time. So this is a good reminder to people. Make sure you label the plants that you plant because this was supposed to be a bell pepper. And it is definitely not. It looks like a banana pepper or maybe even a jalapeno. Um, and this one too. <laughs> so I thought these were all bell peppers and lo and behold, they're not. Uh, the rest of them look like bell peppers though, so at least I've got that going for me. I know this one is, obviously. Um, and this one back here also. So, peppers doing real well. Um, peppers just grow slow, but once they get to up to speed, they uh, produce real well. A uh, couple peppers in the back there, the bell peppers, doing real well. These are um, growing pretty good. Another one in the back. And here's the beans. These things are 30 days ago. I sprouted these and put them in the system, and... Uh, they are already ready to produce some beans. So I've got flowers on them. They're still small, but uh, these things grow just like crazy. So in another week or two, I'll have these things will be loaded full of beans, ready to harvest. And the tomatoes are doing awesome. These are those dwarf Roman tomatoes. Um, this one back here was the first one that, I, that sprouted. Uh, this was planted one week ago in the aquaponic system, and it was about, about this big. And now it's this big, so doing very, very well. Nice green, healthy leaves. Um, stems doing real well, so this is going to be uh, these. Uh, these things look like they, they're going to grow real well in here. I've got all my bell siphons out right now because I have the uh, fish tank drained, and so I had to have a place to put all that water. And so right now, all my grow beds are filled to the top of water, and the sump tank here is also filled to the top. That's about as high as the water can get in the sump tank because if it gets any higher than that level right there, it starts to come out of my drains. <laughs> so, um, sorry, I'm focusing on my hand there. But uh, everything is doing very, very well, and I'm excited to get this tank filled up. I'll have to fill this tank up slowly over the next week. Uh, I have a very slow feed uh, filtered water coming in here to the system through the uh, automatic top off down here. And so, it, uh, I can't just fill the tank all at once. I'll have to fill it up a little bit at a time and let this thing catch up because it, it takes a, a long time to get the water through that little filter. So, But anyway, um, so we have a new fish tank. And soon we'll be doing an update on uh, fish, and I'll do a video on why I chose what I chose and diff different types of fish you can, you can have. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So I'm excited. This will be fun. Finally get some edible fish in here and go through the whole process of um, growing some some fish at home and eating them so if you guys have any questions comments suggestions please let me know throw them in the comment section hit thumbs up on the video I always appreciate it and as always subscribe to the channel if you'd like to follow along um, I will always do aquaponics updates I try to do them at least once every two weeks um, sometimes more often than that just depends if I have more to talk about um, but uh, the uh, aquaponic system is always is will always be an ongoing thing. I'll constantly be changing and adding to it, and uh, so always check in for those updates. And of course, we have all kinds of other things going on as well around our the suburban homestead here. So follow along if you want, and we appreciate you watching today. Have a good one.